you've been for a run, you're tired, you want to lie down, but first we better stretch and that's to help maintain muscle flexibility. In this video we're going to stretch the calves, the hamstrings, the quads, the glutes, inner thighs and back. You don't really need any props, I've got a chair just to help with a few things, but you can use whatever you've got. To start with the calf, I'm going to come up against the wall. I'm going to press the ball of the foot against the wall. I'm going to come in as close as I need to to feel the stretch. So I'm just going to breathe through here for roughly 15 seconds. If the intensity of the stretch is too much and enters into pain, you need to back off. Saying that as we stretch through, the intensity backs off a little bit, then you can push a little bit harder so that you always are in a little level of discomfort but never pain. And then let's swap the feet over. So sometimes I do this on a stair so you can really kind of hang off the stair and get right deep into the calf muscle. They're really powerful muscles and they get very, very tight quickly from running. So starting with the calf is going to help to stretch out the rest of the back of the leg. Breathing nice and steadily. And if your breath becomes a little bit tight, that's an indication you need to back off the stretch a little bit. Okay, let's move away from the wall and we're gonna move up the back of the leg into hamstring stretches. So for this, I've got a chair. I'm gonna place the foot on the chair. It could be a park bench, it could be anything. It could be even higher, of course. I'm gonna place my hands on my hips because I want my hip bones to be facing directly in front of me. So quite often I see people on park benches doing a kind of twisted version, which is not actually targeting the hamstrings. So you want to come forwards, keep square, lift out of the lower back and come as far forward, it might just be there, as you need to, to feel the stretch in the back of the legs. Again, as we stay here for a few seconds, if the intensity backs off a little bit, then you can deepen just a couple of centimetres, never going too far, never pushing. The more you push and stretch, the more your muscles resist. Woo! That's why I've got something to balance on. Can't talk and stretch at the same time. Okay, swap the legs over. Same thing, take your foot onto the chair or the park bench or whatever. Keep the hips square to the front, lengthen through the back, and then maybe you come a little bit further forwards as much as you need to feel the stretch here in the back of the legs. So once you've got that placement of the hips, you can obviously relax the arm, whatever's comfortable, but never pushing on the front of the leg. Just trusting that your body's gonna open up of its own accord. If the intensity eases a little bit, then you can always go a little bit deeper, but being careful not to yank on the hamstrings. They're big, powerful muscles that have to keep tight for sometimes for a reason. And then let's come back up. Okay. We stretch the back of the muscles, we're going to stretch the front of these legs, the quads. I'm going to use the chair to balance it for me. I'm going to take one foot up. If you can't get the foot to quite reach your hand, use a towel or something to, or a piece of clothing to help pull the foot up. But otherwise you're going to hold the foot, you're going to bring your knees together, and if you need more of, a, of an intense stretch, you press the hips forwards. Standing upright all the time, and trying to draw the foot towards the bottom. Okay, so you might be here and that's absolutely fine. You're just pulling to your specific and unique individual maximum. Okay, never pain, only mild discomfort. If it eases off a little bit, then you can press a little bit more through the hips, stand up even taller and pull the foot in even tighter. And then release the foot and swapping sides. I'm going to come a little bit further back for balance. So you're going to take the other foot into the hand or using whatever you need. Bring the knees together and then stand up nice and tall and draw the foot in towards you. For more intensity, you press the hips forwards and you continue to stand upright. Make sure that the foot is neither towards the other glute nor out to the side it's directly behind, so you're not twisting through the knee. And then let's release that quad down, shake the legs out a little bit. Okay. So stretch the front and the back of the leg, let's stretch the side of the glutes. 
Again, I'm gonna use something for balance. I'm gonna cross one foot over, and I'm gonna sit nice and deeply back. So I'm gonna keep my belly in, again, so I keep my lower back nice and long, as opposed to curving over. And I'm gonna sit back as deep as I need to, feel the stretch in the outside of the glute. So just breathing through it, if the breath becomes a little bit tight or laboured, you need to back off the stretch. If it eases off, then you can just squat down a little bit more, make it a little bit more intense. And I'm not pressing on the knee, my hand is just resting on the knee. Okay, standing nice and tall, shake that leg out, either side. So taking the foot over the other knee, or above the knee, actually it's on the thigh, and then squatting down as deeply as you need to. If you want to make this slightly more intense, you can flex the top foot so that it makes it a little bit of a longer journey for the muscle. Sitting down nice and deeply. And if you don't have anything to balance with, then you have to just keep focused on something that's not moving. So not if you're another human being, it's definitely moving. Standing up nice and tall, shake it out. Okay, so inner thighs now. So widen the feet as much as you need to, to actually feel the stretch. So maybe one of those people who's on the floor in complete splits, maybe you're not, probably mostly, most of us aren't. So I'm going to use a chair today, but if you can reach the floor, you can obviously reach the floor, or if you need to be up higher or leaning up against the wall, that's absolutely fine too. But what I'm not going to do is hang out in the, in the heels, I'm going to keep the weight forwards into the middle of the front part of my feet. And I, again, if the stretch eases off, then maybe I'll move my feet out a little bit further, but I always keep my lower back long and my belly lifted. I'm just breathing through here. Really focusing on the breath to get you through. The breath is taking fresh energy and life in all kinds of forms to your muscles that may well be tired. And then very slowly and gently walk yourself back up. So maybe just walking the feet in rather than draw, dragging them in towards each other. One more stretch, and that's for the back. Okay, because quite often we forget about the back, we focus all on the, on the legs. But the back is working pretty hard in running to keep upright. So here we're just going to stretch it out a little bit. I'm going to have my feet a little bit wider than hip distance. I'm going to bend my knees so that I can feel a little bit more into my lower back. I'm going to roll down slowly and I'm going to pause at any part of my spine that feels maybe a little bit tight. So maybe I'm stopping at my upper back, upper back. Or maybe going a little bit deeper into my middle spine. And then finally, I'm just going to bend my knees even more and roll yourself forwards and just hold here. And hopefully you feel a little bit of stretch in this part, the lower spine, the lower back. Just totally release the head, totally release the arms. If you can't rattle the arms and just rattle the head and they're not released, try it. It's a good way to check. Am I holding any tension in the neck and the arms? And then I'm going to roll myself up very slowly, back up to stand. Roll my shoulders up. And that is really quick stretches after a run. So let me know what you think. Please subscribe and check out my other Pilates for Runners video. See you later. Bye.